White River Gallery in Mpumalanga is set to host the first exhibition of Judith Mason's work since her death in 2016. The show that aims to showcase Mason's drawings and additional works of silk screens, artists' books and tapestries is curated by her eldest daughter, Tamar Mason, under the working title Living Lines and Impressions, a glimpse of Judith Mason's editions and drawings. The show will be on display from the 26th to the 14th of July and to tell us more about about the lifetime and career of this extraordinary being. We are joined in studio by Petra Mason. It's great to have you in studio. Thank you so much for coming. Good morning. It's lovely to be here. It's lovely to be here and an honor to be honoring our mother with this exhibition. Um, I believe it's quite a healing process. Um, it certainly is an acknowledgement of her extraordinary talent uh, she was a woman artist at a time where it was quite an unusual thing to be a woman artist. And even in this day and age, Pearl, it's um, it only recently come to the fore that women artists have not been included as they should have been in huge collections internationally, not entirely represented by galleries. Um, so literally... Oddly enough, since about 2016, um, the uh, visibility of women artists has increased in um, both collections internationally and uh, you'll notice the galleries increasingly internationally and certainly in South Africa are representing more women artists. Well, Peter, we're glad that you're here honoring your mother. And I can just hear that the raw emotion, it, mm. it's still there. Um, but, you know, she left such an extraordinary uh, legacy of, of beautiful works that will live on for forever. But I just want to quickly speak about um, her, the woman, the mother that she was, just a little bit outside of the artist. Won't you bring us into who she was as a person? Well, she was an enormously um, intelligent woman. I think probably one of the greatest minds of our time. And um, certainly in terms of her ravenous uh, capacity to consume information, um, read books, I, live, I lived in the States for 20 years and I would literally contact her via email and ask her about what was going on. And she was there in her studio space in uh, Mpumalanga, keeping me up to date with stuff very often. So she had this extraordinary, she described it as a magpie ability to, um, you know, in, consume media and information and she was incredibly well read. Um, always working. I mean, there was no day she would go without spending um, most of it in her studio. Mm. Um, so she was enormously private, but she was hugely popular with anyone who met her. She was very charming, um, <laughs> extremely witty. I think very often people get quite, um, you know, terrified by some of her imagery because it's quite human and quite sore at moments. Mm. Um, but and she had a great sense about. of humor. She, she was way ahead of her time. I mean, you were speaking about just how uh, women artists for the longest time, it's, it's been centuries, how they've been sidelined and not been given equal platforms. But your mom really, she, she managed to, to, to forge ahead and, and, and to bring to the fore uh, some incredible works that have been acclaimed locally and internationally. Do you know what, I don't want to say what made her the good artist that she was, but what are some of the things that she drew from for her art? Well, you, in terms of um, a, as a woman artist, just to, uh, you know, her references were very often very symbolic. Animals, um, a primary source of inspiration for her. The hyena, for example, one of her favorite um, animals. Um, very often the animals that were you know, um, sort of considered uh, too wild or not cute. Those were the animals my mother was attracted to. Um, she really did enjoy the underbelly of the world. Um, she wasn't interested in glamour and celebrity. The, her motivation for being an artist was incredibly pure. It wasn't because she wanted to be, you know, mm. internationally acclaimed or any of that stuff. Her motivation was purely as a creative individual, 
um, enjoying the fact that she had this freedom to control her universe within her studio and um, present her version of um, a, a very symbolically rich reality. Let's and quickly... in the, for example, uh, the Venice Biennale just happened in Venice. Mm. She was in the Venice Biennale in 1966 sure. representing South Africa as a woman. And she would never have made a noise about it. <laughs> Not at all. No, I'm the one who's been making a noise about it. Here I am with you on a yes, Sunday morning. And, and this exhibition brings you here. Tell us all about it and tell us about some of the images um, that have been selected to be a part of, of this exhibition. Well, first and foremost is curated by Tamar Mason, as you mentioned, my sister. And um, the images are drawn mostly from multiples. Um, uh, Judith worked with uh, Marguerite Stevens' studio, Tapestry Studio, and um, so we have tapestries from, from her studio. She also works with William Kentridge. Those are probably the better known ones, but Judith and her had a relationship since the 70s working together. And um, so sh we have some beautiful mohair tapestries created in that studio. And, um, and then the, the lithographic prints that were produced at the artist's press in Mpumalanga. So we have a broad range of um, material. And I see on the screen there's one of her hyenas. Um, and then those are uh, pomegranates from her series that she did at the artist's press. Sheesh, Petra, we are unfortunately out of time, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, very quickly tell us where people can catch the exhibition. If there are any tickets, where can people go for uh, any more information? Well, I'll be doing the opening address at 6 p.m. on the 26th of June at the White River Gallery, which is in the Castor Bridge Centre in uh, White River. All right. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much. And Thank you so much. And all the much. best to yourself and your sisters. And may you uh, continue just lifting up uh, your mother's works and uh, making sure that the world knows about her because she wouldn't have done it herself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been You're lovely welcome. to speak to you. Oh, great Thank stuff. you for having me here. You're most welcome. Thank you. Lovely. That was Beatrice Mason. She is a cultural historian and she's been speaking to us about an exhibition that is set to celebrate her mother called Living Lines and Impressions a glimpse of Judith Mason's editions and drawings. Make sure you get your tickets, go and see it. Just get insight into who this incredible woman was. So